The advertising watchdog has created a survival kit to help Love Island contestants follow the rules when posting ads to social media. The Advertising Standards Authority hope the guidelines will ensure influencers are upfront about paid ads and don't fall foul of commercial advertising standards. So what exactly are the rules? If a celebrity uploads a post that has been paid for, they must label it using the hashtag ad. The same goes for if an influencer receives a freebie or a gift. The ASA considers that a payment in kind and the post must be clearly labelled so. And anyone promoting a discount code who receives a financial reward must also make it clear in the post. Under the rules, this is what a post should look like. As you can see here in the top right corner of YouTuber and social media influencer Zoe Suggs post, it is clearly labelled, post includes gifted items. For more on the ASA guidelines and how they are policed, I'm joined by the social media expert, Toby Beresford. Hello to you, Toby. Thanks very much indeed for being uh, here. Why has the Appetizing Standards Agency uh, deemed this necessary to issue these guidelines? Well, influencer marketing, as it's been called, has been growing really quite rapidly, uh, especially with the rise of uh, social platforms, Facebook, Facebook and Instagram in particular. So where people, individuals who perhaps haven't had media chaining, don't see themselves as a, a publisher as such, are, are posting on their Instagram feeds, on their social media feeds, content that might have been paid for by somebody. And so it's not really uh, true content that's truly theirs it's, or their true opinion. It's something that's been influenced by somebody else. And, and that's really what the ASA is saying. We, we'd like you to, to be a bit more upfront and say uh, which, which of your posts have been paid for by somebody else and which ones haven't. Yeah, so, so it's stopping that blurring of uh, the boundaries really, isn't it? When, when did these rules come into force? Well, the, the ASA has been sort of playing around with this for a while. So, so last year they did a, they, they only just really last year started uh, looking at the issue and uh, the, the, the rules are still very blurry in themselves. And, and one, of the, one of the questions that, that most people have in the industry is, is how is the ASA going to enforce this at scale? Because as we all know, the problem is that you can pick, pick say for example, 17 high profile Love Island contestants and somebody at the ASA might be able to check all 17 of those. But there are, there are, there are tens of thousands of people who are uh, influences in lots of different spaces from beauty to travel. Uh, and it's, it's simply too many for the ASA to enforce on their own. Yeah, it's interesting you say that the rules themselves are blurred because when you look at this on the surface, it, it, it seems fairly common sense, doesn't it? If, you, if you're given something, um, it's gifted. And if you're paid to advertise something, then it's an ad. But, but there are grey areas. Yeah, exactly. So if I'm an influencer, if say I'm, I'm I'm building, I'm going on holiday as an individual, and I've uh, I perhaps get a a free cocktail at the bar, uh, and if I then take a photo of myself and my uh, my my wife drinking our free cocktail, saying thank you to whatever whichever hotel chain it is, um, have I been influenced? Uh, should I should I declare that as an ad, or should I simply say this is us enjoying our holiday? Uh, and so actually, there's there's a real kind of uh, a spectrum of of what denominates a, an, an, a promoted post versus uh, what is just people enjoying enjoying good hospitality. So there's a real there's a real kind of kind of difficulty in enforcing exactly what is legitimate and what is not. And in terms of the enforcement, I mean, there, there have been uh, several posts from high profile influencers, haven't there, that, are, that have fallen foul of the rules. What does the ASA do in that in those instances? Yes. Yeah, so where there's where there's a clear uh, set of um, uh, people who've complained, for example, the ASA tends to will will be able to react. Uh, the issue is is that it's this sort of problem is 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 happening all the time across all social media channels, and really uh, the ASA alone is is cannot just be a reactive force because all that happens is each top influencer who you kind of uh, you fire a shot across their bowels or, or tick them off, there's another ten waiting to take the place who aren't obeying by the rules. So what really needs to happen is is something that is much more industry wide. I mean, I mean, I, I, sort of the idea of something what much like a sort of social media license, like maybe like we um, we all go driving, we have to have a driving license at seventeen, and that kind of teaches us those rules and gives us a penalty system for how we um, how we behave after that. I think the ASA is going to need something like that for social media, where anybody is does have some they've got some sort of a lever and stick to to be able to um, enforce this at scale. 
Yeah, and, and this whole phenomenon around influencers, this new job title of an influencer has meant these rules have had to, to change, hasn't it? There are also rules about responsibility, aren't there? Because these people, these social media influencers have huge followings, many of them young, and they have to be careful about who they advertise what to, that those products are suitable. Uh, absolutely. So, for example, if you're a um, if you're a young YouTuber and and your audience is predominantly, for example, uh, uh, teenagers, uh, you can't advertise alcohol, or you shouldn't be advertising alcohol. You shouldn't certainly shouldn't be advertising smoking related products. So, there's, and, but they don't necessarily know their audience well enough to to be able to to make those make those decisions. And so, it, what's happening is these kind of some sort of young influencers can really burst onto the scene very quickly, uh, and actually they just haven't got the training, the background in. In, in 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 media training and how to run an advertising campaign responsibility. So I think that's a real issue for the ASA. Is it's not just the, the top influencers. It's 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 the it's the long tail of influencers who really need the training. Okay, Toby Beresford. Thanks very much indeed for your thoughts this afternoon.